Touchdown! College football is now B1G versus SEC. Don't put. If you ain't listening to All Right Bet with me and Andy St. Clair, you're throwing away money. Ready? All Lions fans drinking that Kool Aid Super Bowl. Hey, disagree with me or don't. That's how it works. Oh, yeah, that's how it works, guys. You know the drill. It's DWMOD. That's Disagree With Me. I don't. I'm your host, Mike Wilson, as always. And you may notice my counterpart, Andy St. Clair, is not here with us today. That's because we here at DWMOD believe in family, guys. Yeah, we believe that you should be home for the holidays, and everybody is enjoying the holidays except you, Louie. Me and you are in this tonight to get this thing filmed. <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving, guys. Hey, we got a great show regardless. Andy will be here to be giving his big six picks. We have six, six different pickers this weekend, one for every single game. We're going to get to that later. We've got guys that played for these teams that are playing this weekend in the NCAA. We've got alumni. We've got former guest pickers on the show. We've got everybody. We're going to have a different picker for every single game. They'll be here later on in the show. It's going to be a great weekend, guys. NCAA rivalry weekend, nothing better than that. And Thanksgiving, oh, Thanksgiving football all day. Now, we do have to watch the Cowboys and the Giants. We are going to have to sit through that thing. But listen, Miami at Green Bay, that's going to be a good game. Lions, Bears, Bears are playing better. It is Thanksgiving Day in Detroit. We'll be rocking the, the parade, going right down Woodward, man. We used to go to the parade every single year, me and my wife and the kids. I worked down at Engine One. We'd put on a spread for all the families, go down there, watch the parade, and head over to the Lions game, man. Nothing was better, and that's when the Lions sucked. You know what I mean? And now they're awesome. Now they're great. That's going to be a great day downtown. You guys enjoy the hell out of that, and I'm telling you right now while you're tailgating down there, you know what you need to be having. You know what you need to be having. I'm just teasing it. We're going to talk about it later. But you know what you're supposed to be tailgating with down there without a doubt. Anyway, man, let's get to some action. We got a great show lined up for you guys. We got all kind of Thanksgiving theme things. We're going to hit on quick hits, knock it off. We're going to get to all of it. But before we get to that, you know we got a touch with our friend Gordon Butterfeld. You guys know the drill. You know the drill. Gordon is the greatest. Hall of Fame, minor league baseball announcer. He's on the call for What Just Happened. <laughs> what Just Happened? What Just Happened is brought to you by the Joyview Meats Market. Don't go to the grocery store for those price gouge packaged proteins. That's not even a whole pound. Do yourself a favor and head over to Joyview Meats Market. This family has been serving the community since 1969. And they're serving the best cuts of beef, pork, and poultry. Not to mention the best fresh ground Polish kielbasa you'll find anywhere in Detroit. Smoked or fresh. That's the Joyview Meat Market right on Joy Road and Telegraph. Support the neighborhood and tell them Gordon sent you. Young Goose Dolphin Sven now gearing up to be the next Siegfried and Roy. And they'll start with the classic tablecloth yank. But that's Grandma's wagon china on the table. That's a bad idea. Oh, oh no shots to Narnia. Look out, Sven. I think the cabinet killed him. 90% of magical accidents happen in the homestead. Oh, my. That escalated too quick for the human eye. Let's take another look. Gustav is setting up for the tablecloth pole, and Sven thinks the best place to stand is right behind him. But at least his instincts are telling him to cover up his stuff. But then he goes fainting goat. I don't even think he felt the cabinet. He's already out cold. Then Gustav's got the skill set of a good getaway driver. He sees this thing going south, and he's on the lamb. On a positive note, none of the china broke until the cabinet hit it. That's the one way to take it to Narnia. Oh, what just happened? Oh, man, what just happened to that kid? I, oh, my God. Those two, you probably would have been better off playing with a live white tiger than messing around with that cabinet for God's sake, man. Anyway, Gordon Butterfield, he's the man. We got to give it up to you, Gordon. We love you. That's what just happened. And that's going to take us straight into quick hits now, fellas. <laughs> 
All right, guys, it is Thanksgiving. And in honor of the first Thanksgiving, I would like to pay a little homage to the Native American that I remember most fondly from my childhood that just always set an example of nobility and character and pride and, and honesty, just just always doing the right thing and lived the life of service, was always one of my favorite Joes, and that's spirit. That's right. That's spirit. He served this country as a member of G.I. Joe, defeated Cobra, and now he lives his life retired in Arlen, Texas, under his real name, John Redcorn. So tip of the cap to spirit for inspiring so many of us as young men. What a great show G.I. Joe was, man. All right, guys, it is Thanksgiving Day, and you know that means football. Everybody's gathered around food and family and on the couch watching football. Now, uh, let's talk about one of the greatest finishes in the history of Thanksgiving Day football. All right, and I'm going to give you a minute to think. You might think of some great line finishes. You might think of Barry Sanders rushing for three touchdowns against the Bears. You might be thinking of something, uh, but I'm going to tell you what that is, okay? This game that had the greatest finish, it involved – let me just check my notes here to make sure. Yeah, it involved the Jags head coach, Doug Peterson, as a holder, okay? It also, impl- it also involved the player who had one of the most famous fumble recoveries in the history of the Super Bowl, he was also playing in this game, okay? It also involved the all-time winningest coach in the history of the NFL, Don Shula. So now you might have guessed it involved the Miami Dolphins. And this game involved the weirdest, most unpredictable, craziest weather in the history of the NFL as an ice and snowstorm took over Dallas on Thanksgiving Day when the Cowboys took on the Dolphins. And this is one of the craziest finishes ever. Let's check this out. Donovich will decide it as he will try this field goal, which will be 40 yards. 40 yards. Doug Peterson to hold. Blocked. The Cowboys will win. Down if Miami has covered it. A Dallas player touched the ball and then the Dolphins went on and recovered it. It's on the one yard line. It's not in the end zone, it's in the one yard line. They're going to sort it out. And there's three seconds left on the clock. Watch this. 92, Tolbert gets his hand up in the air and knocks the ball. No, it's not 92, it's 97. Jimmy Jones. Now someone touches the football here. Watch what happens. It's Leon Lett. No, Olet, who is haunted by a Super Bowl misplay, and the ball goes into the end zone. They say it was touched at the one yard line. If that were, if we had instant replay, that's a touchdown. The momentum carried the ball in there, and Leon left. No, now with three seconds left, Stojanovic and Peterson are clearing a pass. This is less than an extra point, and with three seconds left, Miami is that close to pulling this one out. Yogi Bear is watching. Elvis Patterson out there. He's trying to come in and throw snow on the spot. Doug Peterson has had time to really clear a path here. I don't know if this would be legal in golf, but it is here. Elvis is going to it on. The field goal was touched beyond the line by the receiving team. The kicking team then recovered the ball in the field of play and slid into the end zone. However, since the ball was still a kick, it's down when the, the kicking team recovered the ball. The kicking team gets awarded the ball at the spot in the field of play, first down. And the Dolphins, as if they received an early holiday present, cheer on the sidelines. Yogi Berra was right. It isn't over till it's over. And now, but it still isn't over. Remember, the last one was blocked, and Stojanovic has missed one today on this slip going. But they've had time with all the delay. You can see the green patch. That's all with the scraping of uh, Doug Peterson, the holder. Stojanovic trying to make a 10 out of 11 game-winning field goals in the fourth quarter. But I don't think we're done yet. The officials are uh, huddling again. Back at the 7-yard line, that's the spot that Miami will get the ball. Oh, it's all of Peterson. 
Now they're discussing moving the ball back. They're trying to figure this whole thing out. We still don't know what has happened yet. But one of my favorite parts of that video is, I'm going to play it again for you right here. When the referee starts to explain himself, and I don't know if it's Leon Lett or who, but you can hear one of the Cowboys when this referee says, and then the Dolphins recovered it, you can hear him yell right at him. No, he didn't. Watch this. It's hilarious. Leaving team. The kicking team then recovered the ball in the field of play and slid into the end zone. <laughs> no, he didn't. No, he didn't. You heard him yell that right there. So they're clearing off all the snow and clearing off all the snow for him to kick this ball from the one yard line. And here, here's what they finally decided. By the way, the 25 second clock has not started yet. So they've got plenty of time here. Don Shula's 327th victory, and perhaps none uh, with a stranger finish. And Leon Lett. off more of the snow. Oh, here we go. One yard. They still haven't started that 25 second clock. No, and Dick, you know we've ruined everybody's nap this afternoon. And now they're going to move it back. They changed their now mind. They, now they moved it Don Chulo the knows uh, his <laughs> rules. He's been on the rules committee for a now long they time, perhaps helping out. The one yard line. Now they're going to clean this whole field before we're done. <laughs> well, this is the kind of uh, effort by uh, Peterson that uh, might be the difference in where you wind up in the playoffs. At 19 yards, he makes it. Miami goes home with a miracle win. Oh my God, that was crazy. I can remember watching that in 1993, man. And they, they couldn't figure it out. They gave the ball to one, and then they clear off all the snow to kick the ball. Then they move it back to the seven. These guys are scrambling to clear off a new patch. Then they move it back up to the one. Hilarious, man. One of the craziest finishes ever. Ice and snowstorm in Dallas. You got to give it up for that one, man. One of the greatest moments of Thanksgiving football history. <laughs> And this is just a quick reminder that this Thanksgiving, when the Cowboys play at AT&T Stadium, uh, they are only four and seven. All right. I'd just like to remind you that they are four and seven. And the Detroit Lions have scored as many touchdowns in AT&T Stadium this year as the Cowboys have. Yeah, that's right. We've scored more touchdowns in one game than they've scored all year. And God love it because nobody likes the Cowboys. But we do have to hear about them. Every single day, we got to hear about what's going on with the Cowboys, and they suck, and their star is out as the quarterback. They're terrible. They're terrible. But every day, we got to hear about them nonstop on all these morning news programs that they're talking sports, which gives us a perfect segue right into knock it off. Because the other thing that we have to hear about every single day on these programs is where is the future lie for Aaron Rodgers? All right. And I got to tell you, I, I got to tell you, I could give a shit. No one gives a shit. No one cares. Stop talking about it. All right, everyone. Time to do me a favor and knock it off. There are so many good things, great stories, and good teams happening in the NFL this year. We don't want to talk about Aaron Rodgers anymore or the Cowboys. Please just stop it, okay? My God. Now, let me ask you guys a question. What is the worst conference in college football this year? I'll give you a three seconds. Two, one, and the answer is the Pac-12, guys. The Pac-12. They have one game, and it's also the conference championship game, and an Oregon State Beavers team that will not even be going to a bowl game beats the Washington State Cougars for the Pac-12 championship. Congratulations to the Oregon State Beavers for Winning the Pac-12 in 2024. What a joke. All right, everyone. Time to do me a favor and knock it off. Okay, this next subject I got to talk about for knock it off really quick for you guys. Uh, Travis Hunter. Okay, he is the easy front runner for the Heisman Trophy this year. He really is doing something incredible. Okay, um, he's playing full-time on defense. Well, he's really playing full-time wide receiver and playing on defense. Uh, listen, he's, he's the best player in the country. He's racking up more reps in every single game than any player in the history of modern 
college football. He's a front runner for the Heisman Trophy, for sure. But things are clearly, clearly different nowadays in college football because something like this, yeah, that right there, that used to be something that was special and earned, you know? You did something like that after you, oh, I don't know, rocked a 93-yard punt return to, to propel your team to the conference championship in the season finale and knock off your biggest rival, who's also one of the best teams in the country. You knock off the Buckeyes, and you're heading to the Rose Bowl. And that's when you did something like that in the end zone. You know, Imagine doing that, rocking the Heisman pose in the end zone, not once, not once, but twice. Like you see Travis Hunter here twice in the game last week when they lost to a four and six Kansas team who knocked them out of the championship game. I mean, what's going on nowadays that, that, that that's what we're doing now. Like is nothing holy or earned anymore. Is everything just a show and social media and your brand and you're getting beat by a four and six football team, knocking you out of your championship contention, and you're rocking a Heisman pose in the end zone twice. I don't know, man. All right, everyone, time to do me a favor and knock it off. Now, the NFL is a copycat league. We know that. We know the NFL is a copycat league. But I'm talking about like schemes and play style and things like that. But the front office, when GMs start to be copycats and just copycat what other GMs are doing, you're quickly looking to get your ass fired. You are. You are. You shouldn't be trying to copycat someone else's blueprint to success when they're dealing with different products. You need to get in and assess your team, assess the players on your squad where you need to get better, who should get paid, who shouldn't get paid. But no. They fall into these traps like, don't pay a running back. It's not worth it. Well, look at these guys. The Giants let Saquon Barkley leave. The Titans let King Henry leave. The Raiders have let Josh Jacobs go. Those three teams are now 7-26 and 26 combined, and the three teams that these guys went to are 24-9. and nine. Running backs matter. If they're elite and special like these guys, you can't just look at the guy's name and see the RB next to it and go, well, he's a running back. We don't pay running backs because that's not how you build the roster and spend the money. No, you got to look at a guy and see his value. Those three guys right there hold a lot of value uh, and not a bigger blunder. Thank God as it was caught on hard knocks when they had that conversation between Saquon and the front office uh, uh, with the Giants ridiculous he's basically i mean shittily telling him look you ain't worth it we ain't paying you we don't pay running backs like that because that's not how you win well guess what you don't know how to win anyway he turned around and handed all the money to dander jones because that's what you got to do you got to lock up your quarterback if you want to win you didn't have a guy worth locking up for that much money and then you let the guy walk out the door who was opening up the game for that guy as much as he could. I mean, any success Daniel Jones had, and I'm not piling on Daniel Jones before he broke his neck. You know, he was showing some flashes here and there, but not franchise $50 million money. And then you get rid of his weapons. You give him that. And then you get rid of his weapon. That just makes no sense at all. It makes no sense at all. You let the star walk and you overpaid for a guy who you just had to cut last week. You know, now, the Titans, I understand, you, you don't want to shell out the money because you stink and you're not going to be winning, but look at what he's doing in Baltimore now. I mean, Henry in Baltimore, when they give him the ball, when they give him 10, 11 carries a game, they're not doing so well. But last week, they ran him you know, for 20-something plus carries, 140, 150. Saquon Barkley and Henry may both reach 2,000 yards this season. They both have a shot at it. They both have a shot at it. Barkley's leading the league right now, but I think he just took the lead off his 240-yard game he had last week, and they're both right around 1,400 yards already. These guys could both crack 2,000 yards. So assess your talent and quit trying to copycat everyone else's recipe for success because 
some of them are, are cooking a meal. Some of them are making soup. Some of them are still dealing with hors d'oeuvres. You can't be copying everyone else's menu. All right, everyone. Time to do me a favor and knock it off. All right, guys. That is going to take us to this week's ULM report. Hey, that's right, ULM. At, they are playing the Raging Cajuns this week. It is rivalry weekend in the NCAA, and that means the ULM Warhawks will be playing the ULL Raging Cajuns. This game is at ULM, coming off a tough loss last week late in the game. Lost the game to Arkansas State 28-21. to Could have got bowl eligible with a win there. Now we're going to have a tall order. Now it's a tall order, okay, because I'm telling you right now that ULL, the Raging Cajuns, uh, sands one bad loss, a, a last-minute loss to a South Alabama team that was scoring more points than a lot of teams in the country. One bad late loss to South Alabama. If that hadn't happened, we'd be talking about the Raging Cajuns having a shot at being the highest-ranked group of five team if Boise State were to drop a game. They'd be right in the mix. I mean, they're nine and two right now. They would be 10 and one with their only loss coming on the road to an SEC opponent. This is a good football team, man. This is a good football team. And now we got a tall order. If we want to get bowl eligible this weekend, we are going to have to rise up in a rivalry game and beat the Raging Cages. Now, I think we could do it. I really think we can do it. This team has shown a lot of guts, they have shown a lot of glory. And when you got the nation's top freshman running back who does things like this, Hardy gets a call, or he bounces off a couple of tacklers, and Hardy's gone. 30, 20, 10, touchdown. 72 yards for the true freshman. I'm telling you, man, that kid, I've been watching this kid run all year long. You see, he just pulls away. They got him bottled up right there. He slips outside past the tackle and just pulls away from everybody when you got this kid you're always in the football game you are always in the football game man and the defense they've they've had spots where they have played really really well this year rivalry game so throw all those records out the window throw that nine and two out the window doesn't matter yeah the rage of cages are going to go play for the Sun Belt championship but it don't matter this weekend because this weekend you're playing for the pride of Louisiana you're coming to Louisiana Monroe. You're walking into Warhawks Stadium, and we're going to see what's going to happen. Hey, give me the Warhawks. Warhawks in a huge upset, and we get bowl eligible this weekend. What do you think about that? Let's go, Warhawks. Now, moving forward on that note, I told you we were going to circle back. I told you we were going to circle back on what you should be doing tomorrow, tailgating for Thanksgiving Day football. I told you what you should be doing for your beverages. And I'm telling you, you know what we're doing. You know. Brass monkey, that monkey monkey. Brass monkey chunky. That's right, guys. Get yourself a brass monkey with the official beer choice of the DWMOD podcast. That's Old English 800. Look, you're going to be up early tomorrow. You're going to be getting at the beverages before you're even going to be watching the Lions at noon. You might be down at the parade in Detroit. You might be tailgating the, the New York Giants and Cowboys football game. You might be up in Lambeau with your shirt off in sub-degree temperatures. But you know what you need to be doing. Get yourself an Old English 800 and a splash of orange juice and enjoy yourselves for the rest of the day, guys. One more time. Brass monkey, that monkey monkey, brass monkey chunky. All right, guys, it is time for the Big Pick 6, which is also brought to you by the official beer choice of the DWMD podcast. That's Old English 800, and it's the Big Six Picks. This weekend, guys, we got a real special treat for you. We got six games that we're going to have picked by six different guest pickers. You're going to recognize these faces and I'll introduce them all as we come into it. Andy St. Clair also in the house going to be giving us his picks. And let's start with college football. Our first game on the docket, Auburn. 11 and a half. I had to make sure I'm reading this right. 11 and a half point dogs to number 13 Bama with the over under at 52 and a half. And here as our first guest picker is friend of the show. SEC specialist, 
big time Tennessee super fan and the man responsible for a lot of the stuff going on behind the scenes here at DWMOD Podcast, Dunbar Dix. Hey, here we go, Mike. This is my take on Auburn, Alabama. I think this is very simple. I'm going to keep it straightforward. Auburn doesn't have something to play for. Alabama does. Alabama is furious about the fact that they got bounced out of the playoffs. They're mad at themselves, and they have something to prove. They're playing at Alabama. I think Alabama not only takes this one, I think they beat the spread. I think it's going to be a high-scoring game. I think they unload on them. It's going to be an emotional game for them. Disagree with me or don't, that's my take. Yeah, hey, it is, man. Dunbar Dix is going to roll with Bama, lay in the 11 and a half, and he is going to take the over. Now, listen, Dunbar, I'm going to be in the same boat as you. I think that this Bama team is, they got to put up some points. They have like some kind of crazy weird outside shot of maybe still making the SEC championship game. Some crazy things happen, but regardless, they need to put up some points. They are angry. And this is, a, I'm t- this, this is the team. I'm hearing a lot of ruckus coming out of Alabama about firing DeBoer. Get rid of DeBoer. Get rid of DeBoer. That's morons talking. You have the greatest coach in the history of college football and you don't think that when you bring a new guy in there's going to be a little bit of a step back as he has to try to navigate the waters of bringing in his system and his guys and getting these recruits together you think you're just going to walk right in there and it's going to be the same thing and let me remind you of this Bama fans remember when Nick Saban came in his first two years, you guys wanted to run his ass out of town too. So just calm down. Caleb DeBoer is a fantastic coach. He's got the locker room. Last week aside, losing to Oklahoma, that is not going to happen this weekend. I know everybody in Auburn wants to be screaming War Eagle, but I'm telling you right now, it's Bama. Lay him the 11 and a half. I'm going to take the under though. I think this is going to be a game that's going to be back and forth early and then Bama will pull away and cover the spread. I'm not going to I'm not going to land on the fact that Bama's going to score 40 and 50 points in this game. I'll be landing on the under. What do you think Andy St. Clair? All right, so our first college football game is Auburn at Alabama minus 11 and a half, 52 and a half. Look, I don't know what to do with this game to be completely honest with you. I'm I what I'm going to take is I'm it's hard to take Alabama. So, you know, Auburn's been a little better, but they're a little better at home. So, on the road might be different. I think Alabama is going to be a little angry. I don't think they've quit on this team yet. I don't think they've quit on this coach yet. There's still a, a very wild outside shot that they get in the SEC title game and maybe even the playoffs. So I look for Alabama to look beautiful for the committee and put up a lot of points. Give me the over and give me Alabama at minus 11 and a half. All right, Andy St. Clair on Bama and the over. So I'm the only one landing on the under there, but we're all rolling Bama in that game. That takes us to our next game in college football, and it is the game of the week. It is the biggest rivalry in college football, and that is the Ohio State Buckeyes against the Michigan Wolverines. Now, this game is in Ohio State this year. Ohio State is the number two team in the country, and for all intents and purposes, should probably be number one if Howard doesn't pull some bonehead slide against Oregon. They're undefeated in number one. You know what I mean? This this is a powerhouse team. But the fact that they are laying 21 points to the University of Michigan is beyond disrespectful. Michigan doesn't look good this year. I'm, well, I'm, they don't look great, but they're rebuilding and they're getting better every single week. 21 points, pretty disrespectful. But I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to expect them to cover it. I'm going to expect them to cover it. And not because Michigan's not up to the task. They're going to come out and they'll they'll play tough early. They'll play tough early. But Ryan Day knows his job is on the line with this game. Buckeye fans could give a shit about the playoff in the national championship if they lose this game. If Ryan Day doesn't win this game and win it by a mile, He's going to be on the hot seat as soon as he's bounced out of the playoffs. If this game is close and he doesn't win the national championship, this guy's on a super red hot seat. So he's going to try to run it up any way he can. I'm going to take the Buckeyes as much as it breaks my heart. I'm going to take the Buckeyes minus the 21, and I'm going to take the over in this game. Andy, what do you got? So we have Michigan at the Ohio State. Ohio State 21-point favorite. The over-under is 42-and-a-half. Look, I'm going to take Ohio State. 
because they need to win to get to the, the Big Ten championship game, which they're probably going to get there regardless. They just got to win. Uh, also, they beat here, then they beat Oregon. I do think they'll be the number one seed in the college football playoffs. So look for Ohio State to put it on Michigan. I think this is what they're going to do. Also, they're going to take every chance to get to put it on Michigan. So give me the over 42 and a half and give me Ohio State. Give me the points. Yeah, we're on the same page there, Andy. There's no doubt about it. We're on the same page here. Now, bringing in our guest picker for the Ohio State University of Michigan game, it is stuntman extraordinaire, Adam Horwitz. You remember him from the show. Big time Buckeye fan. Adam, let's hear it. Hey, what's up? Disagree with me or don't podcast. Adam Horwitz, and I am back to give, uh, give you the pick for the game. Ohio State for, versus the team up north. And you know what? Obviously, you know who I'm picking. Ohio State's going to win. They're going to cover. And I believe they're going to get the over. Because they're going to beat that Michigan ass in the shoe. Can I get an OH? Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. They got the whole family in on that. They're getting excited. They are getting excited down in Ohio for this game. I'm telling you what, because they haven't won in a long time. And they're going to need a team like this Michigan team to limp in there so that they can get this win. I understand that much, fellas. But I'm telling you what, man. I'm telling you what. Don't be surprised if Michigan shows up with a few tricks up their sleeve. This is a prideful game, man. This is a prideful game. But man, you gotta love, you gotta love the passion of guys have for it. They're all decked out in their gear and shit. It is hilarious. Now, before we get to Thanksgiving Day. We're doing all the Thanksgiving Day games here on the Big Six Picks. Let's have a quick rundown of where we're at on the season. Now, last week, the guest picker, Adam Peacock, he went one and five. He went one and five. Not a great, not a great weekend. Uh, Andy St. Clair, I think, believe he went two and four on the weekend, which wasn't, wasn't his best weekend either. Uh, I went six and oh, guys. Pretty good weekend. Pretty good weekend. Six and oh, even on the over-unders, and that takes our standings, of the, uh, uh, you know, up to this point. It's not over yet. Not over yet. Long way to go. But as of right now, I'm in first place with a record of 39 and 27. Uh, my over-unders are minus seven. Now, that's just the tiebreaker, so not too worried about it. But over-unders, I always tell you, not my strong suit. Not my strong suit. Andy St. Clair in second place at 33 and 33. He's hovering right at 500. He's even on the over-unders. And the guest pickers are at 31 and 35. But here's the kicker, the biggest handout of money that's a secret on this show is just roll with the guest pickers over-unders. The guest pickers over-unders are plus 15 through 12 weeks. Guys, that's picking six games every week for 12 weeks, and they are plus 15 on the over-unders. So <laughs> if you want to make some money, just bet the over-unders. Or just bet Andy and I's money line dogs in those college games because we're crushing it on that too. All right, let's get to the NFL. Our first game of the NFL is going to be the first game of the day. It's the Detroit Lions and the Chicago Bears. And I'm going to kick it to Andy for the first take. All right, Mikey, here we go. Uh, I know that we're going to do it all Thursday games, all Thanksgiving, huh? Gobble, gobble. Uh, let's start out with the first one of the day. Bears ten and a half at, uh, at the Lions. Uh, Lions minus ten and a half, forty eight and a half. Uh, look, I don't want to step in front of the Lions train, but I'm going to keep stepping in front of it. The number's too high. It's just too high. It's too high. It's going to be too high. It's. I'm just going to play the number. I'm going to take the Bears at ten and a half. I hate this bet. I wouldn't. I probably won't make it. Uh, but I'm going to take the Bears at ten and a half plus ten and a half, and I'm going to take the under. It's going to be a low scoring game. Uh, probably similar to the Colts game uh bears just kind of play the lions close just similar to last year and that game went over so i should probably take the over but give me the under and give me bears plus 10 and a half all right Andy's on bears and the under but i'm going to tell you right now for me i'm going to be on the other side of this thing I, i'm not stepping in front of the lions train not for this bears team not for this bears team and especially not on thanksgiving now look i know what happened last year on thanksgiving i'm well aware but you guys saw Jared Goff take to the podium. This team has got motivation every single week. And for all the pundits that are saying, hey, they're peaking too soon. They're playing too well. The pressure is going to start mounting up. You start to get bored. You start to play with your food. All that, you can talk all that after Thanksgiving if you want to. 
But this Thanksgiving Day game, Jared Goff went to the podium and let the fans know, hey, we haven't won on Thanksgiving in a long time, and that's something that's at the top of the chart this year for things we wanted to accomplish. They want to go out and get this game big time. And I'm telling you right now, give me the Lions. Give me the Lions to cover on the Bears, and I'm going to take the over. I think they're going to score a bunch. I think they're going to get rolling on the Bears like they have on every other team, and they're going to have the same damn thing. Now, we're going to kick it to the guest picker for the Lions game right now, and we are going to kick it over to our producer, Louie. Louie, you give us your pick on the Lions game right now, boss. Let's see yours. One set, Mike. Producing the show, you know. Many hats I wear. Many hats I wear. But for today, right now, all right bet, you should bet on those Lions at under 48 and a half. Take it to the bank. Lions are going to win, but it's going to be under 48 and a half. Divisional game, tough game. Bears are going to play them tough, but not tough enough to win because the Bears are terrible. So, forward down the field, take the Lions under 48 and a half. Back to you. This guy's something else. Anyway, let me tell you what, man. Fine. Louis is on the Lions and the under. I'm on the Lions and the over. Let's get to the next game. It's the Miami Dolphins and the Green Bay Packers. Now, this game is up at Lambeau Field, and I'm telling you where I'm going to land on this one first, guys. I'm going to step outside the box here. I'm going to go against all conventional wisdom. And I am going to take the team that cannot win in the cold weather game. It's a must-win game for the Miami Dolphins. They need to win this game. Since two has come back, they've gotten better and better. They are scoring. This team can put points up on the board. And the Packers, outside of beating up on half of the 49ers last week, they've been stumbling through some games. I'm going out on a limb here, guys. I am going to take the Miami Dolphins to win the game. Uh, so in this, I'm going to take Miami plus three, though. I'm going to take the points in this one. I'm going to take the points in this one. But give me Miami and the over. Now, Andy, what do you think? Last Thanksgiving Day game, all Thanksgiving, uh, it is uh, the Miami Dolphins minus, uh, plus three at the Green Bay Packers. Green Packers minus three, 46 and a half. Look, we all know about Tua. Can't play in the cold. I think that continues. Uh I like the under in this game. I don't really like the Packers in this game, to be completely honest, but I'm going to take the Packers at minus three. I just think two in the cold. and it just There's tons of stats that back this up uh, anywhere on X or threads or whatever you're looking stuff up. You can find this information. So give me the Packers minus three and give me the under. I just think I just feel an under day coming on Thursday night or on Thursday Thanksgiving football. It's under day for me. All right. Let's go unders. Hey, man, that's the way you're going to roll it. That's the way you're going to roll it, Andy. Now, let's get to our guest picker for this game. Friend of the show, former guest picker, this guy, Second City alum, actor, and performer extraordinaire. This guy, big-time Miami Dolphins fan, grew up in the area. Give it up for Aqua Dance out. Dolphins Packers for the Thanksgiving night game. Get the pie out. Put the kids to bed. Let's go. I'm loving this game right now. I'm loving the pick. Miami plus three, of course. It's going to be a close one. I think we're going to squeak it out. As long as Tua can make every play manageable, we don't get in third and long situations. I like our I like our odds. I'm definitely going to go with the over on this one. Both teams are capable of scoring. They're not going to blow anyone out, but I think this is going to be a lot closer than what people are thinking. So, yeah, taking the over. Miami plus three. Disagree with me or don't. I'm taking my fins, baby. I do not disagree with you. We are on the same page, Aqua. We are picking the same team. We are picking the same team. I'm going to tell you that right now, man. All right. Well, hey, let's, before we get to the last NFL game, we have one more college game to hit, okay? Let's hit this last college game, Notre Dame and USC. Another big rivalry. Now, I think the game, where's the game this year? It's at USC. Game is at USC this year. Notre Dame is laying seven and a half. USC, the over under 51 and a half. Andy St. Clair, where are you landing on this one? Last game, Notre Dame, minus seven and a half at USC. Over under 51 and a half, 52 and a half, whatever it is. Uh, Look, Notre Dame wins and they're in. Probably lose, they're probably still in, but lose is going to cause a little more confusion. I'm going to take USC at plus seven and a half. Do I think USC is going to win the game? I don't know. I don't think so. I think Notre Dame is going to squeak it out. But you're going to give me the hook. You're going to give me the home team who wants to ruin Notre Dame's chances 
possibly to get in the playoffs, yeah, give me that team. So give me USC and give me the over. Over. I think that's the only way USC has. They're going to have to get into a shootout. Notre Dame scored over 30, seven games in a row or something ridiculous. Notre Dame's going to put up points. So is USC. Over USC. I'm going to keep – listen, I'm just going to disagree with you big time. I'm going to keep it simple right here, guys. I'm going to be on Notre Dame to cover, and I'm going to be on the over. USC has done nothing to show me this year that they should be in this game with a team of the caliber of Notre Dame. Now, everybody can preach to me Notre Dame schedule, Notre Dame schedule. That's fine. You can only play the teams on your schedule, and they ain't squeaking out wins. They're hammering. They are hammering. And I'm telling you right now, USC, big win last week over UCLA. They're all excited about it. You better be ready for Notre Dame this week. And I'm taking Notre Dame. I'm going to lay the seven and a half points, and I'm going to take the over. Now let's get to our guest picker for this game this week, and it is USC alum, former USC Trojan, played under Pete Carroll. You saw him here on the show before, and that's Brandon Carswell. What's up, everyone out there? Brandon Carswell here, USC alum. So you already know who I'm going with. After a crucial win last week to get bowl eligible, don't praise it. We're USC. We're supposed to be bowl eligible. But a good win against our rivals. This is another rival coming in thinking that they're just going to blow us out. And it's not going to happen. Give me USC plus the points. Plus seven and a half. USC is going to win it anyway. I might do another bet. Money line USC. That's it for me. I'm just telling you guys right now, disagree with me or don't. I disagree with you on this one, BC. I disagree with you on this one, other than the over. We're all on the over on this one here, no doubt about it. But BC is on the Trojans, as he should be. Proud Trojan himself. That takes us to our last game of the week, guys. We're finishing up Thanksgiving Day with the last game. This is, Andy called it, this is the sleep game. You're going to be all turkeyed out, footballed up, and you're going to take a nap during this one. The New York football giants, plus four. At the Cowboys AT&T Stadium, the over-under here, 37 and a half. And our guest picker here, you've seen him on the show before, documentary filmmaker, made a great documentary about his father, who's a principal at a very poor Hispanic town in Texas, where a lot of the young ladies at that school don't get to have their quinceaneras, and it's heartbreaking because that's a major part of their culture. And this guy's gone out of his way for the last number, a number of years a long time he's been doing this and he acquires all kind of ball gowns and prom dresses. They acquire so many dresses and they put them all in this room and they have these girls come in and they get to select the gown of their dreams and they throw them this giant quinceanera for all of them at once. And they have this glorious party. I'm telling you, it's a great documentary called my quinceanera. It's heartwarming, man. It's, we need a lot more stuff like that going on in this country. But it's Gilbert Galvin with his pick. He's a big Cowboys fan and Texas alum. Hey, everybody. It's your favorite Longhorn coming to you from Texas, uh, helping out with some picks this week. I got the Cowboys minus four easy on Thanksgiving Day against the Giants. Let's go with the over two. I would parlay the two. And a little bonus pick for you. My Texas Longhorns are going to whoop the crap out of little brother, Texas A&M. Minus five, easy money, easy work. Hook them, take them all day. Oh, oh, little bonus pick there? Gilbert throwing us a little bonus pick there. Now, Gilbert is a semi-professional gambler. He gambles quite often on big stuff, big money stuff. Sometimes he knows what he's doing. On this one? I told you on All Right Bet already, stay away from that. Texas A&M could straight up win the game. I got him as one of my money line dogs to win this week. I'm on the Aggies at home this week, but that's not even what we're talking about. We're talking about Giants, Cowboys, Thanksgiving Day. Andy St. Clair, tell us where you're at. All right, we got the Giants, New York football Giants at the Dallas Cowboys, minus four, the over-under 37 and a half. Come on, what are we doing playing this game? This is the sleep game. We should. We don't need to be anywhere near this game. Uh, look, don't care who's at quarterback. Don't care about either one of these teams. I think they're both bad. But I am going to take the under in this game. I think it's going to be a snooze. I think get that turkey ready. We're going to sleep through it. Uh, And I think it's going to be a Giants plus four for me. So Giants plus four in the under, mainly because I don't think either of these teams are very good. So just give me the points. There you go. There you have it. Andy calls it. He's it's it's going to be the sleep game. I'm going to tell you where I'm at on this one, guys. I'm going to take the Cowboys. I'm going to take the over. I'm just going to take the Cowboys in the over. I think the Giants are terrible. They're tanking. They're hanging. They're, they're, they're folding up their whole season. You're hearing it all over TV, and they're not wrong. They've given up. The locker room knows that the front office has given up. So why should these guys go out there busting their ass trying to win this game? Uh, the Cowboys, 
are going to win this one. I'm going to take the Cowboys, and I am going to take the over. Well, guys, that's going to do it for this week's Big Six Picks. We'll be back again in full swing next week. All fresh new episode. All right, bet. You know, that's every Wednesday. We're handing out the free NCAA football and the free NFL picks. And we have been hitting. If you missed it on All Right Bet, I'm telling you right now, last week we hit for over 70% on NCAA, 70% on the NFL. We're handing out free money and that thing every Wednesday night. It's All Right Bet on DWMOD Pod. Check that out. We'll be back with the big six picks next week. Special guest picker will be picking six games. And we're going to finish out this season strong. And I just want to tell all you guys, enjoy your thanksgiving have a good day don't get in any stupid fights with family because it ain't worth it i'm gonna tell you that right now you're probably just wasting your breath because i ain't gonna change their mind that's what i mean by that just keep it moving and we'll see you next time college football is now b1g versus sec don't put if you ain't listening to all right bet with me and andy st Clair, you're throwing away money ready all lions fans drinking that kool-aid super bowl hey disagree with me or don't that's how it works